If you're after any custom integrations or any other cool community created content, then by far the simplest way of actually installing, but also for actually managing and updating this content is to make use of hacks. So let's have a quick look at how to actually set it up and use it. To get started, we're gonna to need to ensure that we've enabled advanced mode on our user profile. So if you open up your home assistant and head into your user profile, then just scroll down ever so slightly, you'll see an option for advanced mode. Here, you're gonna to wanna to turn this on. Next up, we're gonna to need to make use of an SSH client. For this video, I'm gonna be making use of one of the ones that's available through the Home Assistant add-ons. You can use a different add-on if you want to, or if you wanna use an external SSH client, then you can also do so. And if you already have those things set up and know how to do this already, then feel free to make use of the chapters below and just skip ahead. Heading back into Home Assistant, we're gonna select settings, then add-ons. We're then gonna choose add-on store in the bottom right corner. Then up at the top of the page, we're gonna start typing SSH. And the add-on that I'm gonna be using is the SSH in web terminal. I can then just hit install. Once the installation completes, we'll be presented with a few different toggles. The ones that I'm choosing to turn on are Watchdog, which will allow the add-on to restart if it crashes, and also show in the sidebar, which will just give me quick access to the SSH terminal. We now just need to configure our SSH client. So up at the top, we're just gonna select configuration. For this video, we're not running through the full SSH configuration. So I'm just gonna be keeping it to a bare minimum. The only bit of configuration that we're actually gonna set is just a password, which will allow us to actually start the SSH client. So in between the quotes, you're gonna to need to enter a password and this password needs to be a bit more secure than just password. So don't just write password one, two, three. Once you've entered your password, you can scroll down and select the first save button. Then back on the top menu bar, you wanna select info, which will take you back to the main add-on page. And from here, we're just gonna press start. Give the add-on a couple of seconds to actually start up then select the open web UI button and this should hopefully take you to the main SSH terminal page. If when you select open web UI, you get an error message or you get an error page like 502 bad gateway or some other page, try giving the add-on just a couple more seconds to actually load just in case it hasn't yet loaded. And failing that, if you go back to the add-on and choose log at the top, you can actually read through a breakdown of why the add-on's not working and you'll need to read through this in order to actually fix the issue. Using our working terminal, our next step is going to be to use the wget command to actually download and unzip the hacks package. To do this, we can just simply copy the command in the description below and paste it into our terminal. Using Windows, if Ctrl and V doesn't work for you, you can try using Ctrl Shift V. If Ctrl Shift V still doesn't work for you, then try some of these other commands to actually paste it in. With the command pasted into our terminal, we can just press enter and the package will start downloading and then zipping. The download and unzip for hacks should just take a couple of seconds and you'll know it's completed as the bottom message will remind you to actually restart Home Assistant and we can do that now. So let's select settings, then up at the top, we're gonna to select the three dots and we're gonna choose the restart Home Assistant option. Once your home assistant's restarted, we'll quickly just need to clear the browser cache to make sure that we can actually see the hacks integration. And a quick way of doing this is just by pressing Ctrl and F5. With that done, we can head into devices and services and we can add a new integration using that add integration button in the bottom right corner. In the dialog box that appears, we're gonna start typing hacks and hacks should just appear in the list and we can just select it. To start the activation process for hacks, you'll first just need to confirm these four declaration points, which just remind you that any of the content added through hacks isn't vetted by the Home Assistant developers. And if you're happy with the points, go ahead and press submit. Once you've submitted that declaration, you'll be presented with this eight digit code, and we'll need to use this code to link hacks to our GitHub account. And if you're watching and you currently don't have a GitHub account, then pause the video and quickly go and make one. It's quick and simple to do, and it's also free. If you've already got a GitHub account, then you're good to go. Simply just highlight that eight digit code and copy it to your clipboard. Then using the link just above the code, select that and it will take you to the GitHub device activation page and then just paste that code in and select continue. To complete the final step of linking hacks to our GitHub account, we'll just need to select the authorize hacks button. When we do this, we'll get a congratulations message and we can then return to Home Assistant where we'll hopefully see this success message. In this dialog box, you can optionally assign hacks to a specific area within your Home Assistant, and you can then just press the finish button. With that all completed, hacks has now been added to our Home Assistant, and we can actually view it in the sidebar. 
You may notice that Hax has no icon, and if it's like this, where it's just all totally white until you hover over it, then it's just because the browser cache needs to be cleared. Again, we can do this by just pressing Ctrl and F5, and Hax will then appear like magic. As well as being able to view it in the sidebar, you can also view it as a card in the integration list, so here we can see it with one service and one entity. Selecting Hacks in the sidebar will take you to the main page of the community store. From here you can choose to browse for either integrations or for front-end items. Integrations are going to consist of lots of custom integrations and custom components created by the community. The front-end consists of custom cards, elements and lots of other Lovelace changes that you can add to your own Home Assistant. You're now free to start browsing the Home Assistant community store and to start adding and customising your Home Assistant with things that you like the look of. If you're after a suggestion for something to get started with, I'd highly recommend checking out Mushroom by Paul Bertain. And if you want a couple of other extra recommendations, then check out some of the videos that I've made using Hacks. And there we go guys, that's been a quick look at how to set up and install Hacks. If you have enjoyed this video, then don't forget to drop me a like. And if you're not already, hit that subscribe button and ding dong the notification bell. You'll then be alerted to any future video that I do. As always, a massive thank you to these awesome dudes. These awesome dudes are my Patreons and also my YouTube members. And if you're interested in helping support my channel, which in turn allows me to create content like this, then you'll find links to my Patreon and my YouTube members in the description below. Thank you for watching and I'll catch you in the next one. Cheers.